There's a lot of things about communication that is very difficult, uh, even communication that you can directly use, verbal communication, written communication, things like that, where you can have a back and forth conversation. Uh, this is especially important when you're trying to work together towards some sort of goal. Now, take away the element of communication, uh, especially written or spoken communication, and things get a little muddled. Um, and it's a game mechanic that is, at the same time, frustrating to me and really fun because I get very tense when it comes to having to work with someone but not be able to communicate um, absolutely. So the game we're looking at today takes that element of teamwork with aspects of communication removed. So today we're going to be taking a look at Dragon and Rider. Dragon and Rider pits two teams of two against each other in a battle to the death. The premise is that two warriors, each riding a dragon, attempt to kill each other. Each team of two consists of a rider and a dragon. No verbal communication can be made between the two, since dragons rarely speak English and when they do it's a pretty heavy Sean Connery accent. Each rider has a set of three attack cards and each dragon has a matching set of attack cards as well as three stance cards that can afford their attack benefits and potentially convey their intent to their teammate. Teams set their life tracker at 35 and the game begins in a series of rounds. First the dragons simultaneously reveal their chosen stance to take. Then the rider will place face down one of their attack cards to use this round. They then take one of their remaining two attack cards and place it face up for all to see. This face up card is an indicator to their dragon of an attack that they will not be playing this round. With that, both dragons then choose an attack card and play it face down next to their rider's card. All face down cards are then flipped and damage is dealt accordingly. Attacks are most powerful when the stance matches the main attack, and both the dragon and the rider have chosen the same attack to perform. This is further compounded if the chosen attack happens to counter the opponent's move. Attacks that don't match the stance, don't match up with what a teammate chose, and don't counter the opponent's move often deal very little damage and will potentially harm your own team as well. Should two different attacks be played by the same team, the one with a higher speed value is performed. Play continues until one team is knocked below 0 HP. Should that happen to both teams in the same round, the team who has taken the most negative damage will lose. Dragon and Rider takes rock, paper, scissor and adds a whole lot of variables and makes it a team sport. It's an interesting concept and certainly makes the game far more competitive and thematic than what could ever be done with two people throwing hand signals at each other. My big problems with Dragon and Rider is that, though a shorter game, the rules come off as a convoluted garble of, the, of those variables I mentioned before. You have to worry about your stance, matching what your team member places and trying to figure out what move your opponents might make to potentially counter. For me, it's too brain burning for a game that's essentially a filler with a generous helping of guesswork involved in the core mechanic. Players have to juggle a number of possibilities that allow for oversight and mistakes to be made fairly easily. The initial game is going to have players frequently reaching for the rulebook. On a more personal note, I find games with such a specific player count, uh, two player games excluded, difficult to swallow. Four player only games are a hard sell for me, but I'm certainly willing to give them a shot. Once you grok the initial turn or two, however, things may get a little smoother. It's one of those short games that's annoying to explain, but once you wrap your head around it, things start to come into focus. This doesn't negate my concerns with Dragon and Rider. When playing with a set of people that all know each other very well, there's going to be far more interesting dynamics than a group of four strangers coming together to play. The theme of the game is that a dragon and a warrior are working in harmony against a common foe. If that harmonious connection exists outside the game first, it's going to thrive within it. I only had a chance to look at the prototype components, uh, but the artwork was nice and the iconography was functional and clear once you knew what was going on. For what it's worth, Dragon and Rider is going to appeal to a specific group of people, and even if you're not among that group and you find yourself playing, the length is brisk. If you're in the market for a quick, interesting game that will test your nonverbal communication skills, this might be worth checking out.